we wanted to uh, update you on today's uh, bus strike by members of Local 1181 of the Amalgamated Transit Union. Uh, Pam Mitchell, thank you very much for signing for us today. Uh, and uh, Chief Banks, thank you for coming. Uh, at the out outset, let me say something about the attempts by some supporters of the strike to prevent buses from operating. Four bus vendors, three in Brooklyn and one on Staten Island, reported that pickets supporting the strike block gates at their garages this morning in an effort to keep buses from those garages from leaving. That is illegal. The NYPD was called in to intervene so the buses could roll out and start picking up their students, many of whom may have been standing outside in this morning's freezing rain with their parents waiting for their rides to school. The drivers and matrons on those buses are not members of Local 1181. They're either represented by other unions or are non-union workers, and I think it's just an outrage that picketers would try to prevent them from doing their jobs. It is an even bigger outrage that they would try to prevent kids from getting to school today. Now, union leaders have denied that this is a strike against school children and their families. Unfortunately, I think it's fair to say such disgraceful actions speak louder than words. And whatever else happens during the strike, let me make it clear, we won't permit that kind of reprehensible conduct. Now, let me give you an overall summary of the school bus situation. There are a total of 7,700 yellow school bus routes in the city. They serve about 152,000 students out of a total of 1,350,000 public and private school students and pre-kindergarten students. Uh, the 152,000 is about 11% of the total. So to start out, that means that 1.2 million of our students were not affected by the strike. For them, it was a normal school day, although I will say with the weather, um, a lot of them probably weren't happy to trudge through the uh, rain and uh, slush, but they did get to school. Our focus, however, has got to be on helping the 152,000 who use school buses on a normal day to get to school. Uh, and we're doing that by providing free Metro cards or by reimbursing parents their auto travel expenses to and from school. And we've especially focused our help on the roughly 54,000 public and private school age uh, students with special needs. Uh, those youngsters are often, uh, often experience extra difficulty when trying to use public transportation and we're doing everything we can to uh, uh, make uh, their problems as minimal as possible, although uh, it obviously for some of them it really is a struggle. Let me tell you what happened today. At 7 a.m., roughly 39% of about 3,000 of the total, or, or 3,000 of the total 7,700 bus routes, routes were running. So let's say 40%, 3,000 buses out of uh, the 7,700 uh, picked up the students on their normal routes, and that includes, I'm happy to say, all of the pre-K routes serving 12,000 students. And that's because they were covered by contracts that were renegotiated last year. And the buses that are in operation are staffed by workers who are not, I will say, members of Local 1181. Before turning things over to Dennis, let me reiterate. This strike is about job guarantees that the union just can't have. That's what the state's highest court, the Court of Appeals, has ruled. That opinion was written by New York State Chief Judge Jonathan Littman. The union has lost legal challenges on this issue at every level. Twelve judges told them they're wrong, that they are seeking protections that aren't provided, incidentally, in any other school district in the nation. In fact, Local 1181 has contracts with other bus companies nearby in Westchester County on Long Island and Connecticut that do not have in those contract provisions such as this and where they are nevertheless providing safe, reliable bus service. But if you tell a lie long enough, maybe some people will believe it. The truth of the matter here is any lawyer will tell you, after 12 judges, right up through Chief Just, uh, Judge Jonathan Lippman, have said something is illegal, it is illegal, and trying to say, well, it's illegal for one group and not another is just ridiculous. It is illegal for us to provide it in this situation, regardless of whether these are pre-K students or special ed students or uh, any of the other groups of students. Number two, we pay far more than any other school system in the nation for school busing. The question you have to ask yourself is, are we doing a good job in allocating the taxpayers' money 
that we've devoted to education to the part of education that will give our students the best results. We spend in the city $6,900 per student compared to the next closest system, which is Los Angeles, which pays just $3,100 per student. So less than half in Los Angeles and all of the other cities are less than that. It is just irrational for us to keep spending this amount of money unless there's no alternative. And we're going to find out whether there's an alternative by putting the contracts out to bid. That's what the law requires us to do. It just hasn't been done since 1979, but that doesn't mean we don't have a responsibility to do it. Today, our students and parents are having a tougher time than ever before with this economy. The taxpayer does not want to spend any more money than he or she has to do. Uh, we do have an obligation to provide safe, reliable service, but we have an obligation also to do it at the best price, and we want to reinvest anything that we can save back into the classrooms where we know we have to keep improving the educational experience for our kids as the demands of the marketplace and globally increase. This is why we've chosen to bid out contracts for 1,100 bus routes. Uh, we think that the union has obligations as well. It is obviously designed, unions as they should be, to protect their members and get them the best wages and benefits and working conditions that they can, and we do understand that. But we don't set salaries and benefits for these workers. Their employees, the bus companies that they work for do. And the protection that they're seeking is one which we can't force their employers, employers to provide by law, and it is not in the city's interest to do so. The city's interest is to get the best service that it possibly can at the lowest possible price. And that's exactly what we're going to do. The taxpayers of this city have never told us that they want to take any one group and say, I'm going to pay more taxes just to support that group. The taxpayers of the city want to make sure the city's employees, who we have a responsibility to, get paid as well as we can, as fairly as we can. That's 280,000 people, and our responsibility is to make sure the monies are going to them. And when we contract services out, to get the best possible service that we can at the best price. Uh, the uh, uh, employees that are striking, uh, they have to resolve their issues with the bus companies that employ them and not us. Uh, so let me turn things over to Dennis and he can describe it in a little more detail. Dennis? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, let me thank the parents for their patience and perseverance this morning. Uh, they had very difficult circumstances as a result of the union, 1181, and a lot of our parents were able to surmount those difficult circumstances. It was not easy this morning. They had to take multiple buses or subways to get their children to school. Uh, but as a result of them, our children were in school. Let me just dive a little deeper in what the mayor talked about. And based on preliminary data, roughly 60% of our schools reporting, uh, our average attendance today was 88.5%. Again, that's what 60% of our schools reporting. And that compares to the January month to date figure of 89.5%. So little less than 1% decline in our month to now day comparison. And that to me is as a result of the parents. Uh, as the mayor indicated, the number of routes that were covered by our bus companies, and we're proud of them for having getting, getting their buses out on the street. Uh, we think that the companies have been working very hard to try to get their buses out. But again, the first several days, as we indicated, will be extremely difficult. And so for me, I want to just say thank you to our parents for all their patience and perseverance in making sure that their children get to school and they're getting a high quality education. Dennis, thank you, and uh, hopefully for the parents, they'll figure out ways to uh, uh, carpool or to share responsibilities of taking the kids and making sure that they have their Metro cards and, or they keep the documentation so that we can uh, compensate them for the monies that they spend to make sure their kids show up in school. I think it is just amazing, given the weather also, incidentally, that uh, the uh, attendance rate was only 1% worse today than it was for the average this month when the weather has been uh, much nicer than normal January weather. It says parents really understand the value of education and they're determined to get their kids to school no matter what. 
We just don't want to make it any more complicated or expensive or difficult or time consuming for them than we ha actually have to do. Uh, before taking questions, let me try to summarize for our Spanish speaking New Yorkers. Este huelga es irresponsable y este afectando a más de 100 mil estudiantes. A pesar de la huelga, casi 39% de nuestros camiones escolares amarillos han estado en operación transportando a nuestros niños a la escuela hoy.